So one of the most difficult and confusing aspects of uh, the short game, and in particular chipping, is how do we control the distance the ball rolls when we chip? Well, I've got two ways, and in this video, I'll show you both. So there are two schools of thought. I'm not gonna say which is right, which is wrong, because there are excellent chippers that do both. What I want to do is explain both to you, then I want you to do your research and development, which is practice. And based on your practice, you'll get some sort of feedback as to which one is the best method for you. So the first one, I'm going to change the club to make the ball go a different distance. So this is a, a, a round about a 20 to 25 yard chip shot. <clears throat> it's pretty flat slopes a little bit left to right but it's pretty flat i've put two alignment sticks down here that's going to act as a, sort of a square or my landing area so the key to this first method is we are always going to land the ball on the same spot it'll make sense to you in a minute so i'm going to use my 60 degree lob wedge for the first one forget where the flag is it's not important i'm not going for the flag i'm just going to try and land the ball somewhere between these two sticks. So my intention is to get that ball landing bounce between the sticks. Which it did. And then the ball has rolled, it's breaking to the right, but don't worry too much about that. The ball has rolled, and I'm gonna call it X. So I'm now going to skip a club and I'm gonna to go to my, to my gap wedge, my 50 degree wedge. Everything is the same. I'm gonna still try and land the ball between these two sticks. Same technique, same length of swing. The length of swing shouldn't vary because my landing area is still the same. And we're just gonna see what happens when the ball lands. So, the ball has landed between the area. I caught it slightly thin, that's okay. But you can see the ball has rolled further. I'll put that away. Now I'm gonna go with my nine iron. So the whole object here is we're skipping a club. Lob wedge, gap wedge, nine iron. Same set of principles. I'm still trying to land the ball in the same spot. The technique doesn't change. Landed in exactly the same spot and the ball's rolling a little bit, bit further. Why is the ball rolling further? I'm not changing my technique. There is less loft on the club. Less loft makes the ball roll more. I then get my seven iron out. Once again, I've skipped the club. Now when the, the loft gets less, it's more difficult to land the ball exactly in the spot. But I'm still trying to land the ball roughly in that spot. So because my landing area hasn't changed, the loft has changed, I'm still pretty much using the same length of swing. My technique isn't changing, but I'm trying to land the ball in the same spot. So that's landed in the same spot and the ball has rolled more distance. So now I'm gonna go with a five iron. So less loft, harder to land it in the same spot, but we'll see how I go. That ball's landed in the same spot and you can see the ball is rolling. So if we actually look at the distances between all of those golf balls, there is a similar distance between those balls. It's not exact, but it's approximate. And you'll find there's approximately 10 feet of difference in distance between those two clubs. 10 feet is about three meters. So if I land the ball on the same spot, I just have to choose the distance I want the ball to roll. Remember, we're skipping clubs, we're going Lob wedge, gap wedge, nine, seven, five. So that's given me one, two, three, four, five different distances, which is going to cover most lengths of the green. 
So this is the method that I tend to use. When I was younger, I used the, the second method, which I'll get to in a minute. But I find this just to be so much easier and so consistent. And some people say, gee, this is confusing to me. I've got too many choices. But if you think about how do we play golf? What club do we hit 80 yards? What club do we hit 150 yards? We don't take the same club and hit it harder. We change the club to make the ball go the different distance. You just need to know what the distance is. So I'm, this is similar golf philosophy. We're trying to land the ball on the same spot and we're making the club choice of loft to make it roll more or less. If you're going to be wrong, you're not going to be more than a club out, which means you're only 10 feet out, which for most golfers, that's going to be a good result. So as I said, that's the first method. The second method would be to say, I always use the same club. So we could actually say that Phil Mickelson is a great example of this. Phil uses one club and has many, many different swings to produce different distances. So if I start out and I'm gonna use my sand wedge here, my 55. So if I want to land the ball to where the, or finish as close as I can to that second ball, I'll see if I can do it with this club. It just rolled on a little bit further, but I wasn't la trying to land it between the sticks. It's not my best result, but it's a result. If I then said, okay, I want to land and get the ball finishing closest to the third ball, what do I need to do? I've got to change either my tempo or my length of swing. So I'll have a go at trying to get this one a little bit closer. So every time I do it, I'm changing the swing. Better result, that's about three, four feet away. Better. Now if I say I'm gonna have a go at the flag stick. So I've still got the same club. I wanna land the ball further. Now the further I land the ball away from me, the more difficult this shot is. My margin for error is greater. If I'm landing the ball close to me, like I did in the first example, my margin for error is smaller. Now I've got, I've, I can miss hit it and still get away with it. If I miss hit this one, it's going to be a very poor result. But as I said, if you practice it a lot and you've got confidence in it, it's a great method. I wouldn't try and change Phil Mickelson's idea of what he should be doing. It works for him, but you've got to practice a lot and you've got to be very skilled to do it. So I'll have to go now and I'll try and get this one close to the flag with my sand wedge. So that's uh, four feet-ish, something like that. I landed the ball a long way away from me. It's not a bad result from here, but it's just changing the swing or one of the variables in the swing to produce different distances. As I said, I'm not gonna tell you which is the best one. What I'd like you to do is try and test both and see which one works for you, which one gives you the best odds. I've done that, and for me, I really like the first method. It, it's, it's stood me in good stead for most of my career. When I was younger, I pretty much used the one club, and I don't think I was as good then, but maybe I'm not as highly skilled. I'm certainly not as highly skilled as Phil, Phil Mickelson, but I like things to be simpler, and these days I don't play much golf, so I certainly don't practice, so it would make sense that I would use something that's going to be a bit more forgiving and a bit simpler. But if you practice a lot, you can get really good at that one club. It's a great method. So there's two methods. I'd love to know what the results of your practice is. Send me an email, leave a comment below. Uh, I'd be really interested to find out. If you want to lower your score and if you want to improve your chipping, I'm going to put a video up there that's going to show you how we can improve your chipping action.